Everybody and welcome to the Gospel Minute from St. Michael's Orthodox Church in Geneva, New York. And today, we start in chapter 8 of St. Mark's Gospel. And in chapter 8, Jesus feeds the 4,000. The Pharisees demand a sign. And Jesus says, beware of the leaven of the Pharisees. So, but before we start that, Let's pray our psalm for today, and that's psalm number 7. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. O Lord my God, in you I take refuge. Save me from all my pursuers, and deliver me. Lest, like a lion, they tear my soul apart, rending it into pieces with none to deliver. O Lord my God, if I have done this, if there is wrong in my hands, if I have repaid my friend with evil, or plundered my enemy without cause. Let the enemy pursue my soul and overtake it, and let him trample my life to the ground and lay my glory in the dust. Arise, O Lord, in your anger. Lift yourself up against the fury of my enemies. Awake from me. You have appointed a judgment. Let the assembly of the peoples be gathered about you. Over it return on high. The Lord judges the people. Judge me, O Lord, according to my righteousness, and according to the integrity that is in me. O let the evil of the wicked come to an end, and may you establish the righteous, you who test the minds and hearts, O righteous God. My shield is with God, who saves the upright in heart. God is a righteous judge, and a God who feels indignation every day. If a man does not repent, God will wet his sword. He has bent and readied his bow. He has prepared for him his deadly weapons, making his arrows fiery shafts. Behold, the wicked man conceives evil and is pregnant with mischief and gives birth to lies. He makes a pit, digging it out, and falls into the hole that he has made. His mischief returns upon his own head, and on his own skull his violence descends. I will give to the Lord the thanks due to his righteousness, and I will sing praise to the name of the Lord, the Most High. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Okay. Chapter 8, verse 1 of St. Mark's Gospel. St. Mark writes, In those days, when again a great crowd had gathered, and they had nothing to eat, he called his disciples to him and said to them, I have compassion on the crowd because they have been with me now three days and have nothing to eat. And if I send them away hungry to their homes, they will faint on the way, and some of them have come from very far away. And his disciples answered him, How can one feed these people with bread here in this desolate place? And he asked them, How many loaves do you have? They said, Seven. And he directed the crowd to sit down on the ground, and he took the seven loaves, and having given thanks, he broke them, and gave them to his disciples to set before the people. And they set them before the crowd, and they had a few small fish. And having blessed them, he said that these should also be set before them. And they ate and were satisfied. And they took up the broken pieces left over, seven baskets full, and there were about 4,000 people. St. Matthew tells us there were 4,000 men and also men and, uh, women and children. So there could have been very well 12,000 people there. And he sent them away, and immediately he got into the boat with his disciples and went to the district of Dalmanutha. And that, St. Augustine tells me that that's the same name, the same place that they use for the town of Magdala or Magadan. And St. Matthew in his gospel uses the word Magadan, the place name Magadan for this place. And just that is traditionally the home of Mary Magdalene, Mary of Magdala. Alrighty, going on. 
The Pharisees came and began to argue with him, seeking from him a sign from heaven to test him. And he sighed deeply in his spirit, and he said, Why does this generation seek a sign? Truly I say to you, no sign will be given to this generation. And he left them, got into the boat again, and went to the other side. Let's turn over to St. Matthew for just a moment. And we're going to read starting at chapter 16 of St. Matthew, uh, starting in verse 1. It's a parallel passage, but he has a little more information. And the Pharisees and Sadducees came, and to test him, they asked him to show them a sign from heaven. And he answered them, When it is evening, you say, it will be fair weather, for the sky is red. And in the morning, it will be a stormy day, for the sky is red and thickening, uh, threatening. You know how to interpret the appearance of the sky, but you cannot interpret the signs of the times. An evil and adulterous generation seeks for a sign, but no sign will be given to it except the sign of Jonah. So he left them and departed. What is the sign of Jonah? Well, as you remember, God gave Jonah a mission to go to the Ninevites and preach the word to them, to teach them about God. Well, Jonah didn't want to go. In fact, he took off in the other direction, away from Nineveh. And behold, a great storm arose, and they were fearful of everyone on the ship drowning, for they were at sea. And they blamed it all on Jonah, and they threw him overboard. And a great fish swallowed Jonah up. And after three days, the great fish spit Jonah out of his mouth onto the shores of Nineveh, or near there. Well, the sign of Jonah is, of three days, he will be dead in the, way, in the belly of the fish, or Jesus will be dead in his tomb. And then, as Jonah was spit out, Jesus will arise. And that is the sign of Jonah. Okay. Now St. Mark writes, verse 14, Now they had forgotten to bring bread, and they only had one loaf with them in the boat. And he cautioned them, saying, Watch out! Beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and the leaven of Herod. And they began discussing with one another the fact that they had no bread. Now Jesus had just laid something profound on them, and they're talking about bread. Let's see what St. Matthew has to say about that. So, St. Uh, Matthew has them reaching the other side, that is, around Magdala or Magdalene. When the disciples reached the other side, they had forgotten to bring any bread. And Jesus said to them, Watch and beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. And they began discussing it among themselves, saying, We brought no bread, but Jesus, aware of this, said, O oh, you of little faith, why are you discussing among yourselves the fact that you have no bread? Do you not yet perceive, do you not yet remember the five loaves for the five thousand and how many baskets you gathered? Well, my Orthodox study Bible says five loaves are symbolic of the law, the five books of the Torah which the law is contained in, the Jewish law. Okay, or the seven loaves for the 4,000, and how many baskets you gathered. The seven loaves is the Jewish, uh, seven is the Jewish number for the completion of something. So symbolically, Jesus is saying he is the completion or the fulfillment of the law. How is it that you fail to understand that I do not speak about bread? Beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and Sadducees. Then they understood that he did not tell them to be aware of the leaven of the bread, but of the teaching of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. Let me explain that a little bit. Leaven throughout the whole Bible. Today we use yeast, and back then they 
may or may not have used yeast, I don't know. Sources tell me that the use of yeast as a leavening agent was uh, very rare. But they would take some dough that had been brewed and had the uh, bacteria in it that would cause the bread to rise. And they would save a little portion of that and put it into the new dough. And then that little piece of dough in the new dough, that little piece that was infected by the bacteria, would grow throughout the entire loaf. And here he's saying, you know, just even a little bit of the bad teaching of the Pharisees and the Sadducees, in Matthew's Gospels, the Pharisees and the Herodians in Mark's Gospel, even a little bit of that can infect the whole loaf, infect the whole church. So beware of it. Beware of it. Even a little mistruth can have great effect later on on the whole church. So, uh, so now they had forgotten to bring bread, and they had only one loaf with them in the boat, so says St. Mark. And he cautioned them, saying, Watch out, beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and the leaven of Herod. As you remember, the Herod family was a ruling family in Israel at the time. And they began discussing with one another the fact that they had no bread, and Jesus, aware of this, said to them, Why are you discussing the fact that you have no bread? Do you not yet perceive or understand? Are your hearts hardened? Having eyes to see, you do not see. And having ears to hear, you do not hear. And do you not remember when I broke the five loaves for the five thousand, how many baskets full of broken pieces did you take up? And they said to him, Twelve. Twelve symbolizes the twelve tribes of Israel. And the seven for the four thousand, how many baskets full of broken pieces did you take up? And they said to him, Seven, the number of fulfillment or completion. And he said to them, Now do you understand the word of God? Okay, tomorrow Jesus will heal a, a blind man at Bethsaida. So, until tomorrow, may God bless us all. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord.